Hey everyone, welcome to the Wicked Ones podcast. This is Tara. And this is Jen. And haven't seen you in at least a week again. How's it going? It seems to be the trend. We have our weekly date. Yes, one that I look very forward to. Our wine and dinner and podcasting. Yes, it's my new Friday night. (laughs) Midweek, it's great. (laughs) Woo-woo! Nobody can ever claim that we don't do anything fun on Friday night, even though, you know what you're working on Friday and yeah. <laughs> never doing anything <laughs> like grading papers and putting stuff together um so how was your weekend you guys went and celebrated Jason's 40th right we did we did it was so much fun we went horseback riding and it was the first time I had ever been horseback riding we went on these trails so that was even a little bit more intimidating and I was very nervous and I told everyone I was either going to get the horse that was going to be rowdy and or the horse that was going to be really slow. And I ended up with the horse that was really slow. Uh, but that's probably better than the rowdy one for me. Because I probably. would have had a panic attack and fallen off the horse. Probably. So he was... I was sore the next day because he was... He would be really slow and then I'd finally get him to catch up with everybody. So he would chat kind of like quickly. And I had my whole body tense because I don't know how to ride a horse. Sure and I was did. scared. And so I was like sore the next day. Not incredibly, but... Mm-hmm. And then we went back to the house and we played games and they had someone come make us dinner and it was, it was a really, really fun weekend. Awesome. Oh, that sounds really good. I'm so glad. We, um, we didn't do anything as fun as horseback riding, but, um, I did promise Ava that we would actually leave the house this weekend and do something. So we had a little girls afternoon. We, we, uh, we headed out, we grabbed some Starbucks drinks, her favorite little caramel apple hot whatever that I never know what it's called I always forget but she loves it and um I think I got like a oh I the new pumpkin spice cold brew it's pretty good really cool yeah yeah. a lot less calories than like the hot one so I thought I'd try it one day and it's actually very very yummy so if you haven't tried that one I recommend it and they they give you like a new little sippy cup lid it's interesting <laughs> My kids oh. both commented. They're like, "What is that?" And I said, "Oh, it's like an adult sippy cup. It's amazing." <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to look um, into that. I haven't been to Starbucks in forever. Yeah, yeah. This is a new one for me. I mean, I love their cold brew anyway, but um, this one was really good. So we went to Spirit Halloween after that. Of course, our one of our favorite stores. As soon as it goes up, the kids are like, "We want to go." You know, it's like mass chaos until I take them. So we went there and just kind of checked everything out, and uh, she ended up. She wanted to be Sarah Sanderson from Hocus Pocus, and That's so, fun. of course, I got Winifred, so we got our costumes, and they're actually, they're super fun. She's been dressing up since we got it the last couple of days. She's done her um, her schooling as, as Sarah Sanderson. I'm I'm pretty sure tomorrow I'll have to call her Sarah. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but she's... As long as she does her schoolwork, yeah. who cares? Oh, she's, call her she's loving it. So I've got one dress as a witch, and then I got Spider-Man in the other corner, and... Whatever works. You know, whatever helps you get through your math. Yeah, I don't, you know I'll what? call you Peter. I'll call you Sarah. Just get your shit done. You know? Let's get it done. Cheers to that. <laughs> so. We have our ideas for our Halloween costumes, but we still need to shop for all the pieces and get it put together. So, Is it a surprise? Can, do I not get to know? No, we're, we're just going to be army soldiers. Oh, fun. Like from Toy Story or just <laughs> army soldiers? No, like army soldiers. Okay. Like, <laughs> the kid, I have to tell the kids they can't carry fake guns. They don't, you know, my kids, mm. they're just crazy like that. So, yeah. yeah. All camo. Nice. You know, Julia probably wants to wear trees on her head. I don't know. Oh, it's that's crazy. awesome. <laughs> no, that's super fun. I'm excited. I need to get on it because before you know it, we're going to need our costumes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, it reminds me of the year I dressed up as SWAT. I brought all my dad's stuff and it was like legit. It was amazing. People... I had a lot of people commenting, wow, that's, where'd you get your costume? I'm like, my dad's closet. <laughs> See, right? Yeah. I wish I had that. Oh, it was awesome. I wish my, well, my brother's obviously gargantuan compared to me, but I <laughs> would really wish I had his stuff. He had to get, like, clips and rubber bands. You get him to work. I could have. It would, it would be too okay. Nice, too far away. But, um, you know what? I'm really excited to hear your story this week. Um, we're continuing our Halloween theme, so. We are. Um, so, this story actually happens on Halloween night. Okay. I'm going to apologize in advance because it's not the later story that I promised. The kids are giving dun-dun-dun footsteps oh, in the background. they are giving dun-dun-dun footsteps if they could just go ahead. <laughs> uh, so this story is, is 
just gut-wrenching, I, I will admit. Mm. But my heart couldn't let it go. Once I read it, I felt like this sweet little girl story must be told. And it must be told over and over. Okay. I'm sure I agree with you. And By the end, I know everyone will agree. Okay. So forgive me this time. I will try to be lighthearted next time. Do we need to bring like boxes of tissue to, to podcast night now? I or? know. I'm no. sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I know. I try to stay away from kid stuff, but this one would just, it pulled at my heartstrings and it just hit home in so many ways. And you, like I said, you'll see, you'll see. All right. Well, I got my wine. Go, go ahead. <laughs> so today I'm going to tell you about the Halloween killer and the murder of nine-year-old Lisa French of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Mm. So, Why do all the murders we talk about happen so close to home? Do. So this is about two and a half hours from our house in, yeah. in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. On October 31st, 1973, Lisa French left for trick-or-treating in her neighborhood around 6 p.m. She originally wanted to dress as dress as a butterfly, but she lives in the Midwest. We know the Midwest. Mm-hmm. The weather is not supportive of those fun costumes, and her mom didn't feel that a butterfly costume would be warm enough. We can, yeah, we can relate to that, yeah. right? Oh, well, last year we trick-or-treated in the snow, remember? In, in boots. So yeah. every year you go through all of this effort to pick out your costume, and then you're covered in boots and hats and winter jackets, and no one knows who you are anyways. Yeah, no. It's, it's always been kind of a sad time. So... She decided that um, she was going to go, with her mom's encouragement, she was going to go dressed as a hobo. Okay. So she wore jeans, covered in masking tape. She had a floppy felt hat, a green parka, and her face was dotted with freckles. Okay. And I could see that as a mom. I'd be, all right, she's warm. She's she could wear go. a winter jacket. And she's she's got a hat on. Yeah. 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 You could see that. Lisa planned to meet with her friend, Ann Parker, and head to Pumpkin Place. And Pumpkin Place was an outdoor party that was being hosted by local parents. Okay. This is the time where the big concern happened for poison candy. Oh, yeah. Razor blades being stuck in candy. Oh, you yeah. remember when that... Yeah, I mean, when you had to take your candy in to get it x-rayed, and it was like a big deal. So this is a little bit before us, but that's mm-hmm. around that time. Yeah. Uh, so parents wanted a safe place for their kids to celebrate. They created this, this safe outdoor area near their home. Her friend Anne had gotten in trouble with her parents. She she wasn't allowed to go. Uh, So she had to go by herself? So Lisa was left to go on her own. She only made it to three houses that night. The first was a teacher's house, the next a classmate, and the final stop was a block from her home, and it was the home of Gerald Turner Jr., Turner is a 25-year-old divorced male with two small kids and a girlfriend. But Lisa knew Turner. He used to rent the other half of her family's duplex before moving a block away. And when they lived next door to each other, Lisa used to play with Turner's baby and even push the baby up and down the street in the stroller. Okay, so she felt comfortable there. Arlene Penn, Turner's girlfriend at the time, said Lisa would even stop by to show Turner new toys or tell him new exciting things or just to chat. But all I can think of right now is that that's what our kids do. Mm. They do? You know what I mean. Like, they they share with our... Well, we're a little closer with some of our neighbors, but they share all of that stuff with the neighbors. Oh, I can't wait to show, you know, Mr. Mike my new costume, or I can't wait to talk to you... Do you know what I mean? So I can picture it. I can see I can see her being, oh, can I go show my new toy to Mr. So-and-so? Because in her eyes, they're friends. And she... I get that. But if my kid comes up and asks me to go show one of the adult male neighbors who's 25 year old, years old okay, their new okay. toy, yeah. I'm shutting that shit down. <laughs> okay. Well, to me, it doesn't seem that weird because we hang out with these people. But they're not 25. All the time. So... No, I mean, I get it. Well, I didn't know he was 25. He's 25. Okay, now I know he's 25, and it's weird. Okay, fine. Keep going. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just think it's... I, I mean, at this time, I'm sure it was normal. Like, he lives next door. We should have... No, what? but you know what I mean. I'm just I like, no, like, no, 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 no. Like, it's, of, it's very innocent. Well, I agree. again, with the neighbors, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you think you know? You mm-hmm. think you know people. Like I said, this hits home in many ways. 
So Lisa's mom, Marianne, she begins to worry around 7.30. She didn't go because she was at home taking care of Lisa's newborn stepbrother. And she told Lisa to be home by 7. At this time, Lisa lived with her mom and her stepdad. And she's 9? She's 9. Okay. She'll be home by 7. Our kids play outside later than that. Mm -hmm. No, I was just trying to... Yeah. Yeah. So by 10 p.m., the neighborhood was in full alarm. Neighbors called each other and organized. They put on porch lights. They put signs in their windows. The police searched all night. Mm. The next day, 5,000 people joined the search. Private planes searched the sky. Um, Horses and all-terrain vehicles were in marshes, creeks, and fields. Bodies of water was dragged. The National Guard was even called in. Wow. Oh, no, that's that's a massive man. That's a massive yeah, search. This community yes. came together. That's amazing. Um, the local print shop printed six thousand copies of Lisa's school photo to be passed out, and the local gas station was giving away twenty five gallons of free gas to anyone who was using their vehicles in the search. Wow! Like these people were on it. That is, that is amazing. What they didn't know is that Lisa was already dead. So, full of innocent, Lisa entered the home of her familiar friend, Gerald Turner, with the expectation of candy. 25-year-old Gerald Turner then took Lisa to his bedroom where he brutally raped and, according to police, strangled the little girl. Mm. He claims that he didn't strangle her. He claims that at one point during the rape, he noticed that she wasn't breathing and attempted to resuscitate her, but then he was interrupted by his girlfriend coming home. Okay. (sighs) Then he places socks on his hands. Why the socks? I need to know this. He places socks on his hands, and he hides Lisa's body in the master bathroom. Why the socks? You raped this child. Yeah. What are the socks going to do? No, nothing. So, Turner's girlfriend states that she got home around 7.15. Okay. So, by 7.30, mom's worried. Lisa's already dead. Okay. Oh. And she did not make it far. She left their house around 6, and she's... I mean, this all happened within an hour. Yeah, it happened so incredibly fast. <sighs> Um, so his girlfriend says she got, she got home around 7.15 with her daughter. Turner came out, of, came out. He was dressed in the bathroom, in his bathrobe. He sat on the couch. He said he wasn't feeling well. He went back into the bedroom several times to lay down. Can, had he done this before? Was this just a random, I'm just doing this right now? Do we know? Do you know? We don't know of any prior, well, I shouldn't say that. Do you know what I mean? Like, was this just like a random, okay, I'm doing this right now? Or? There's he, more. Oh, okay. I always ask the questions too early. Just no, going. but there's more. <laughs> but it's not officially more. So, he was supposed to go back to his girlfriend's mom's with her. But he encourages her to go alone and he's going to stay back because he's not feeling well. And like I said, he went back into the master bedroom several times while she was there. But she never entered the master bedroom. Had she... Oh, she probably... He probably would have had to... Explain a couple things. Or she would be dead, too. True story. So after she left, um, he gathered three garbage bags that he would use to dispose Lisa's body. Two for her and one for her belongings. He then loaded the bags into his car, drove, and dumped them out on a country road. Just off to the side of the road? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, he didn't take much effort. He didn't make any attempt to. Okay. So, while driving his tractor home Saturday morning of November 4th, so this is four days after Lisa went missing. Can you imagine your child being missing for Mm -hmm. four days? No. Four days after Lisa went missing. Just pure torture. Gerald Braun, who was a farmer, came across trash bags in the brush along the road the trash bags contained the lifeless body of Lisa French and her clothing oh my god 
First on the scene was Wayne Geis of the Fond du Lac County Sheriff's Department. And he said, it was the worst possible thing that could have ever happened. I saw that little girl and I don't know how any man could do that. Turner should never, ever be released. Oh my God. Just anyone who finds something like that is forever going to be haunted. You're traumatized for the rest of your life. Uh, The local pastor... The Reverend Clarence Nikolai, he climbed the barbaric fence, cutting his hand to say that our father and Hail Mary over Lisa's body. Because this is like the whole community was searching for this precious girl. After that, her body and clothes were processed, fibers were collected, and the people of the community were left broken. Oh my gosh. Did it, so... You said it was Fond du Lac. Mm-hmm. How small of a, how small of a community? Do you do you remember just offhand? I don't know. The, it's not very big, but I can't remember the numbers. You know, you know what I'm saying. I'm trying to. There's always, we always talk about how it'd be great to live in just like a quaint small town where everybody knows everybody, and this is what happens when things like this happen. They come together. They help each other. I imagine if the gas station is giving out free gas. That's amazing. I mean, you don't. It has to be small. Right. You wouldn't hear of anything like that here. No. Never. Mm-mm. Not even back in 73, I, mean, in, I would imagine. Right, and this area is pretty small. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't live in the city. We live in the, no. a decent-sized suburb, but I couldn't imagine... I still can't imagine people doing doing this. This is... Correct. Mm-hmm. Yes. On November 6, 1973, Lisa was laid to rest in the same white and, dress, white and purple dress she wore in her fourth grade school photo. Most of the community attended to pay, to pay their respects to the precious young life that they helped to find. Nine rows of pews were taken up by classmates and her fellow Girl Scouts. Now let's just take a second to think about that. These poor kids had to attend a funeral of a friend who was brutally murder, murdered in their own town on Halloween. I mean, that's just, that in itself is traumatizing for these poor kids, and they'll never forget it. Their lives will never be the same. No. That this town, town is never, never the same no. after this. No, they, I can't imagine. I, I imagine that in a town like that, that touched every single person that lived there in some way. And for decades to come, because somebody always knew somebody who was there, yeah. who helped in the search. You know what I mean? Like... There's always that connection. So let's talk about Turner and how he went down. Okay. The day after Lisa was reported missing, Turner was questioned during the police's door-to-door interviews. The police felt his story about where he was that night was off. And, you know, in I'm not going to make any... I don't want to try to make any assumptions, but in a town like this, you know, they probably already knew who did it before they knocked on his door Mm -hmm. because you know, people's personality, you know, that something like this doesn't just happen and people go, Oh my, I mean, every once in a while you hear that. Oh, I'm so shocked. He was such a good guy. He was an amazing neighbor. He was, they're Mm -hmm. probably like, Oh my God, I know who did it before. The police even arrived. Well, the police say they could prove that Lisa had gone to two houses before his, mm-hmm. and then she was never seen again. Mm-hmm. It's pretty obvious at that point. But it wasn't until March of 1974. Wow, really? Okay. Until police are led back to Turner's home. They are also sus- suspicious of Turner, as he has a... Pending case of sexual assault against a minor. Oh. So, as you were saying, was this, in a this town one or and done? I don't know if it's that town or the town over, mm-hmm. but this gives me the small town vibe. It does. Yeah, no, it does. Okay. At that time, so we're March 1974, they know that he's, he's already got a pending case of sexual assault, and they ask him again for his, his alibi and his whereabouts. Of Halloween. Mm -hmm. His explanation contradicted his original statement. 
Of course it did. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. No. And it didn't surprise them either. So a month later, they bring Turner in to the police station for a formal interview. This time, his statement contradicts the other two statements. So not one of his three statements match. Okay. Yeah. Can no, you, you hear this all the time, but at the same, I have to wonder how hard is it to... You know what I'm saying. Well, I mean, come on. Get it together. It was Halloween. I wasn't feeling well. I went to bed. My girlfriend left. Like, right. I mean, that's really And then really I went to bed it, for the night. Right? Yeah. And then he does agree to provide hair samples and fiber samples from his bedspread. Mm, okay. That's a big, like, Turner. They're on to you, buddy. Yeah, he, well, does he this, not? Is, he does, this is 1973. He, he did not realize. have a heads up at this so, point. So, and this is obviously before DNA, and yeah. this is back when fibers were a he thing. Probably we don't really use fibers right, anymore. Right. No, we don't. Well, and you have to remember, this was way before all the CSI and crime shows. Yeah, I feel like people a, have a little ooh. bit of a head start now, which is scary. This is a while, a while back. So, forensic testing does prove a match to the hair on the garbage bag and the bedspread fibers found on Lisa's body. But the results don't come back until fall. Are you kidding me? Fall. So much time wasted. So much time. They get him in March. They don't come back until fall. So he's hanging out until another Halloween. And he doesn't even go anywhere. After the results come back, they go back to his house. They ask him to come in and take a polygraph test. He doesn't want to take the polygraph test. He refuses, and he tells police that he's had a bad experience prior. And he's referring to the case in which another police station, so it must be near, Mm -hmm. um, brought him in in which he was accused of raping a babysitter. So he actually tells them... I've had a bear, bad experience because of a prior situation. Oh, my God. The police, In which he was guilty and he didn't like that he didn't pass? I don't. It, it, I didn't go into. I did not go down that rabbit hole. Okay. Just knowing that there's. Can I just say that I'm surprised this guy made it this far? Because in a town like that, with all the feelings and the small town vibes, I can't believe somebody didn't take this guy out. Right. Yes. Yes. So the police continue to pressure him, and he eventually agrees He agrees to take the polygraph test. But his, his test results for, were inconclusive. They're never positive, right? And they're never... You either pass or they're inconclusive. Yeah. You fail. It's such a hard... I mean, I mean, unless you get them to confess during or something, it's kind of so hard So the police to. pressure him for another polygraph. They're mm-hmm. like, that didn't work, buddy. We need another one. He's super nervous. He doesn't want to take a polygraph test. And then at this time, he starts suggesting to the police that maybe Lisa's murder was an accident. Okay. What the fuck? So he's still maintaining... Okay, no. He's going. trying to, like, suggest... Yeah, yeah. The investigators see this as a break in his demeanor, right? They're mm-hmm. thinking he's breaking down. They have fibers that match. They know she went to two houses. No one saw him after his house. Her mm-hmm. after his house... So they're pressuring him. They get him talking, right? Like your dad says. You just get him talking. Oh, yep. They usually, they usually spill it. They talk themselves into a corner. They can't stop talking. So they continue to talk and talk and talk to Turner. Uh, A two hour conversation led to his confession. And on, on August 8th, 1947, Turner confesses. It's not 1947. Wait, I was going to say 1947. I'm like, that's 1947. It's 1974. Um, Don't mind me. We're dyslexic <laughs> in my family. Um, <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> so, uh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Okay. On August 8th, 1974, Turner confesses to raping Lisa, but he says he never strangled her. Her death is what he calls an accident. And at some point during the rape, he noticed she wasn't breathing. Mm, okay. Uh, for the record, Fond du Lac County Medical Examiner ruled Lisa's cause of death as if, asphyxiation. Okay. By strangulation. Okay. And they determined that she was strangled. It wasn't just 
maybe she couldn't breathe because her face was ob- obstructed in something. They, I they, they mention, so they mentioned that a pathologist says that she died of shock. Okay, how I can mean, they determine that? I have no idea. And I don't know if maybe... I don't know. I didn't. I didn't look into any of that because that just doesn't. I don't know if you can die from shock. That just sounds. I'm assuming that. Even if he didn't strangle her, the police say strangulation. Mm-hmm. The medical examiner, a medical examiner says asphyxiation. We didn't see strangulation from the medical examiner. Almost like maybe she was. They were. The only thing I can think is that she was so shocked by what was happening. Maybe she just couldn't breathe. Do you know what I'm saying? She was just... I couldn't breathe. You know when you maybe, just can't catch I your mean, breath? Who know, and, well, and who knows how the situation yeah. was. And like you said, like maybe her face was stuffed into a pillow. Yeah, or right. And he didn't even realize Realize her. what... Yes. Exactly. Mm. Uh, so they have a confession, but later on he actually recants his confession claiming innocence, and that he only confessed to stop the harassment of the police. Okay. Because that's what they all do. And this is where things get sideways, and I start to get super pissed. Okay. Turner's finally arrested nine months after Lisa was brutally raped and murdered. He's found guilty of second-degree murder, enticing a child for immoral purposes, and acts of sexual perversion. You have to remember this is 1974. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's sentenced to 38 and a half years. Ugh. So he gets out early? And begins his, begins his prison sentence on February 4th of 1975. Now, the circuit court judge, Milton Meester, said during his sentencing... He impressed me as showing no remorse, no feeling of repentance. He was stone cold. I just... Yeah, exactly. Disgusting. And this is, you you know me, like, this is where I start to get, like, real hot. Well, but this, I get that it was the 70s and people didn't get what they should have for things like this and for... for Rape in general. Eight and a half years for rape and murder of a nine-year-old little girl. No. With a confession. Yeah, no. And vibers. (sighs) No. Mm -mm. No. It gets better. Turner is paroled for good behavior in 1992. After only serving... (sighs) 17 years and 8 months of his 38 year sentence. No. Mm mm. And I'm. Mm mm. I know exactly what he did when he got out. So. I know. Members of the community protested, and he was ordered back to prison in November of 1993. There's a civil lawsuit that was filed by citizens. That led to the appeals court decision that the state erred in the way that it calculated its mandatory release date. Okay. They must up. Oh, shit. Paperwork error, and he goes free. Because of all this, and because of the public's reaction, Turner's Law was created. Okay. So something positive comes out of this. Turner's law allows for a violent sex offender to be committed to a secured treatment center when up for parole if they are still considered a threat to society. Okay, okay. No, this is a good law. It's a good law. So you can get out of prison, but you're not going back to to the people. you are not going back to... Yep. You have proven to us that you cannot be trusted. Correct. July 15th, 1994, Turner is up for parole again which is turned down. Turner is committed to a secure mental institution under Turner's law. Take that. Okay. Yeah. By the state. In 1998, he's up for parole again. 
the amount of times this guy gets parole is unreal. So he's up for parole again. And he can no longer be obtained under the law named after him. Turner Law is considered no longer in effect for him. Despite the testimony from the 15-year-old babysitter. Oh, gosh. Okay. A former girlfriend and two former wives. Stating and they still... that Turner beat them when they declined to have sex with them and then raped them. The jury decided he was no longer a threat to society as a violent sexual predator and could no longer be kept in state custody under Turner's law. How? How did they determine that? Who are these people? Okay, whoever was on that jury, I'm talking to you. <laughs> what were you thinking? Rage. You should be ashamed Do you feel of like yourself. My fa- yes, like, no, I'm, I'm... Now you feel all Now I feel it. I feel it. I, oh, my God. So, to, back up for a second. Time out. Why could he no longer be held under Turner's law? The jury felt that he didn't qualify. There wasn't like a time cap or a limit. I mean, there shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. No. They pled his case when the jury so decided they he was to no longer a threat. And they said, oh think, no, you can go. You so can. he was. he's been in prison since 1975. Like I said, he got out for a short time. About a year from 1992 to 1993. And then he went back for five more years. Obviously, if these people, like, are testifying. And coming back all these years later. They feel like he's a threat. Absolutely. So this monster is released back into society. Maybe he should live next to the jurors. Right? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. How did... Maybe I, I the just jurors, don't understand. No, oh, never mind. I'm not okay. even, I'm not, I'm not going to go, go there. there. Bad things are going to come out. I'm just... Okay. So he's released back into into society, and he does have a few small infractions. There is an incident where he is shouting at a caseworker while wielding a knife around, working as a cook. And this is when he is um, living in a halfway house. Okay, okay. But nothing is done about this from 1998 until 2003. When he is living at the Foster Community Correctional House. So this is like a halfway house. Okay. During a routine check, they found hundreds and hundreds of violent pornographic images on his computer, along with sexually explicit videos and magazines. They also found a letter that he had written to Lisa. Oh. 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 When? It doesn't say. It doesn't say whether it's handwritten or... But it says... I don't have all of it. It's in bits. It says, Dear Lisa, I doubt that I could ever fully realize the terror you experienced at my hands. For that night of the children to have started out so joyous for you, only to end so tragically, will haunt me forever. I can still see you standing in the doorway with that felt hat beaming at having recognizing me. He is a monster. You know that he wrote that, hoping that somebody would read it and think that he... But that just goes to say how comfortable she was with him. She probably showed up so happy to see him, excited, because you know our kids, you see a special neighbor that you think, you know, you're getting an extra large candy bar. Oh. Then I see the delight in your eyes turn to fear as I close the door behind you. The rest of my life, I will have to live with what I did to you. On that night, I became a monster. I do swear to you, forfeiture of my life, I will never harm another child. The judge sentenced Turner back to prison for 15 years. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. But he needs to be there for life. I don't understand why there's all these questions. Just put him in there. Just leave him and there. And that's it. Leave him there. In 2017, anticipating again Turner's upcoming release, because this guy has nine lives, Lisa's mother creates an online petition to keep then 68-year-old Turner behind bars. By December of that year, she had more than 20,000 signatures. Good for her. 
uh, she did an interview with Lisa's sister. And Lisa's, Lisa's mom explains that this is just something she felt she had to do. She had to do anything she could do to keep this man behind bars. And that she would never be able to live with herself knowing she allowed him to harm another child. I, I can see that. Yeah. No, absolutely. And her sister, Susan, talks about how her mom spent the first year of her life in court. And how Lisa's murder haunted their family for decades and basically just ruined them. I imagine that anything that was even supposed to be remotely fun was looked at as a possible tragic event. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, she was pregnant when, I mean, she just had, so she had her stepbrother, Marianne, had Lisa's stepbrother, and then she was pregnant after that with Susan. And like she says, so when Susan was one year old, her mom was in court and she was obsessed with this whole thing. So she feels like her mom wasn't really there. And then yeah. she talks about how it took her well into her in, into her adult life to try to understand why her mother was the way she was. Because you never stop grieving a lost child. No. Oh, no. No. And that's, that's kind of what I meant, too, about every event being... She's probably imagining, no, we can't do that for Halloween. No, you can't go to that birthday party. No, you can't go to that friend's house. You, yes. She probably sheltered her from oh, doing that is everything. the chills that I have. Well, and the guilt. Yeah. And the, yeah. I mean, just. But back then, it wasn't, it just wasn't like that. Mm-mm. You trusted your kids to go ahead and go. I mean, it wasn't like she was even letting her go that far. She was like, yeah, she was a block away. Yeah. It'll be like our neighborhood. Yeah. So, on February 1st, 2018, Turner has done his full sentence and he is set for release. The Wisconsin Department of Justice files a petition to have him committed to a mental facility, stating he is sexually violent, and they remind the court that he has already broken the rules before knowing he was under high supervision. Mm-hmm. He was living in a halfway house. Yeah. He was having all of his belongings checked. He couldn't come and go freely, and he still broke the rules. Mm-hmm. This guy's... Yeah. So, he was released from prison and currently resides in Mauston's Sand Ridge Treatment Center. This place is ran by the Department of Health Services and the state's Sexually Violent Persons Program. This is where he is today. This Halloween is the 47th anniversary and of rape and murder of Lisa French. On October 29th of this year, a Fond du Lac County judge will hear arguments that will decide whether to set Turner free or to commit him to a mental health facility for the rest of his life. He needs to go away for the rest of his life. He even petitioned to have this moved out of Fond du Lac County, because I think he knows his fate. I hope he knows. It should be. He is now 72 years old, and I don't believe that he is any less of a threat. No. Hell no. I don't either. This man, he was a neighbor of Lisa. He was someone she knew. He was someone she trusted. His brutal sexual assault and the murder of her has left this town forever changed. For this reason only to this day, trick-or-treating hours are only allowed during the day. In that whole area, right? And he threw her away like she was trash. That's, that's actually one of the quotes that her mom... <sighs> he, she actually states he threw her away like she was garbage. That's just so sad. She was just a baby. She was so... This is home in so many ways for me. I'm mm. sure you can see, right? So this oh, is not yeah. that far from here. Lisa was the same age as my Julia. Yeah, I know. Mm-mm. And the same thing, striving for independence, wanting to go out and probably trick or treat on her own, and we're trying not to helicopter and let them be more independent and don't trust the neighbor, but you need to say hi. So 
The story is everything that I tell my children every day. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. These are the kind of things, unfortunately, that we do have to share with them and let them know that it's not always safe out there. You can't trust them. You can't. Mm -hmm. You can't go inside. So these... We don't always want to talk about the hard things, right? Nobody wants to hear about the terrible things that happen to children. But if we don't talk about the hard things and the bad things, nothing's ever going to change. No, no. I mean, they knew that way back when, right? When they wrote fables and... Yeah. And they will not say fairy tales because... They're not fairy tales. But fables, you know, all those grims. Uh, Actually, they call those fairy tales, I believe, Grimm's fairy tales, but I believe, you know, you know they put those together so that they would terrify children and they wouldn't go into the witch's house. They wouldn't go, you know, Mm -hmm. they wouldn't trust every, everyone. No, and if, if we don't talk about it, the disgusting, nasty people like Gerald Turner, they'll continue to steal the lives of our children and their families. We have to talk about it. We have to tell the stories for the people who can't. Yes. Yes, we do. Lisa Hunter's story, she deserves to be told even if it makes us feel uncomfortable. I agree. I'm actually really glad that you chose this one. I think this is a good one. I think this is a great one for people to listen to and be reminded and share. Again, with those people who maybe don't like or listen to true crime but they can't just hide their head Coming's in the sand. Coming. Don't it's let coming. your kids go out alone. Be prepared. Be safe. Know know the dangers and make sure your kids know the dangers. That's it. That's all we're saying. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to have that five minute conversation. It could save a life. Or follow behind slowly. Yeah. While sure, your kids you can go by yourself. Think they're by themselves. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. So that is. The story and murder of Lisa French. Mm, poor Lisa. I know. I really, and I'll give an update. I mean, there's potential he could get out. Let's hope not. You know, I, uh, I'm just, I'm so glad things have changed since back then, though, and that today, if something like that were to have happened, there's no way. I hope not. Right? All of it is just, I was sick to my stomach reading all of it, 38 years and 17 years for good behavior. No, 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 just you're done. No, you don't get no. another chance. There's no rehabbing from that. I'm sorry. I don't no. care what anybody says. And I can debate that. And I know this is going to sound bad no matter how I say it. So we'll see how it comes out of my mouth. But just the, 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 the rape and murder of a child not and that it's okay ever. It's never and... okay. But she was a child. Yep. You're done. You're done. There, There is no... You're done. And actually, Lisa's dad talks about how he supports the death, death penalty. Which obviously was not on the table. But Maybe it should have been. Wishes, so. Well, you know, my... Sometimes I'm like, well, this guy needed an eye for an eye. Yeah, um, we talked hey, about buddy. that. Hey, buddy. I'm, I'm done with you. You're not coming back for this. You want to know what, what it felt like to be Lisa? Let's, let's find out. <laughs> I, I, hate, I, I hate to say I it like know. that, and I know there's so many people that disagree I hate to even laugh me, about that. I'm not trying but... to be... But I'm laughing because it's sad, and that's my awkward <sighs> coping mechanism. Well, that's always our coping mechanism, I mean, I get that from my dad. I mean, he's seen some really horrific things out there, and the only way that he can cope is sarcasm and humor, and that's it. That's it. That's all you get. You get sarcasm and you get humor. I think it's very similar in healthcare. You know? Yeah. You have to. You have to compartmentalize that, and you just have to keep keep going down a different... You just stick that in that room, you lock it up, and you just keep going. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, so. so that was my last story. Um... For our Halloween theme, and I hope everyone forgive, can forgive me because none of them were. No, they weren't. But very th- this is what we're polite. here for. Hopefully, you learn something, you gain some education and some insight, and that will help somebody down the road. That's my goal. Absolutely. So thank you for that, and thank you. until next time, you guys out there, we we probably said Happy Halloween since September, but we'll say it again. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween!